One other beautiful thing that happened to us when we were trying to make these glowing materials in Kytosan is starting material that we wanted to work with is called gold one. So gold one in the plus one oxidation state has plus one charge. <clears throat> can actually be produced by you know, converting gold that is used in jewelry. You dissolve it in acid. Okay? You form this so-called liquid gold. Okay? And then you add an organic solvent called dimethyl sulfide. <clears throat> and small amounts, not actually very harmful. It is the same chemical that makes cabbage stink, or even fish stink. Okay? So that material can reduce gold from gold plus three to gold plus one. So it changes color from orange to white. Okay? So since it is just one charge, then light can be used to actually reduce it to, uh, to a metallic gold. So you lose this charge by a process called photoreduction. And then gold, if you keep it in the nanoscale, it has these beautiful colors instead of the gold color that you see for jewelry. That is, you need to be, it needs to be large. But if you confine it, if you use a stabilizer, the same kind of design that I was telling you, <coughs> to keep the other uh, uh, small particles in the nanoscale from agglomerating or aggregating with each other, then you, get, you have these beautiful colors. The most sought after color is this, this blue looking color. It's associated with so-called anisotropic nanoparticles, means particles that are longer in one dimension than the others. So it could be in the form of a rod, or a prism, or an octahedron, different geometric uh, shapes. So on our, our dean, is a mathematician, right? So these, when it has the longest dimension is in the 50 to 150 nanometer, as opposed to 10 or under 50 nanometer, they have this beautiful color. And this beautiful color is sought after because it absorbs near-infrared light. Near-infrared light can do deeper tissue penetration without being as absorbed by the body fluid. Water and hemoglobin in the blood will not absorb near-infrared light. So what that means is that every photon for the physics audience, every, every light particle that these particles absorb, these nanoparticles absorb, can be converted to heat. And the heat can be used to be conjugated to cancer cells. So this research was also serendipitous. Basically, before we added the organic ligand to this gold one precursor, gold one starting material, to make it glow, my student forgot the, um, <coughs> left, left the solution between just the starting material and water in kytosan, right, which is colorless. So the white becomes colorless in, in water, right? The next day, because he failed to add the organic ligand to make it glow, he found these beautiful colors. So the reason is that it underwent photochemical reduction to make these nanoparticles. So this is how the research is connected and interesting. So it is designed for something, but we identify something completely different. <coughs> so. Just like the uh, biochemical composition that I showed you earlier, they're extremely benign. So as you can see here, the cell viability for our nanoparticles is 100% in all the dilution steps of the National Cancer Institute, NCISA. <coughs> Whereas the common particles that you can buy in the market with this type of shape that absorb extremely well the overlap with the surgical laser output, near-infrared laser output, right? They are about $1,000 a milliliter, by the way. Just a little bit amount is about 1000 bucks, right? So the problem with those is that they're actually extremely toxic. The cell viability is no longer 100%, it's under 10%. It is just as bad as the control poison. The cell killer in the assay, Triton X, is a, a, in the assay it is, it is the control cell killer. So as you can see here, you have to keep diluting that until you reach the sixth dilution. Let's say that we can live with 80% viability, means 20% killing of healthy cells, OK? So <clears throat> if we live with that level, we have to dilute the so-called biocompatible particles by a factor of 24. Each dilution step is a factor of 24, is a factor of four dilution from the previous step. When you dilute it by that much, you have to compensate for the cell viability by using a much more powerful laser that could kill the healthy cells. Whereas our particles, they do not need our dilution. They can absorb the entire uh, 
um, <coughs> near infrared uh, <coughs> um, radiation, and we can use it to release drugs from these polymer uh, <coughs> matrices that they are stored at. Then you can see the drug released only when you zap it with the infrared light. So as you can see here the control. There is no signals for the chemotherapy drug, but if you zap it with, for 45 minutes, 100 minutes, 145 minutes, this drug signal becomes stronger and stronger. And the nanoparticles, the gold, is actually not, uh, not toxic. Our variety of gold, as you saw here, is not toxic. But even though people may have reservations that you can have gold, as you can see, as a result of the radiation, there is no gold nanoparticle signal that are responsible for these cells. So they remain inside the biological, biologically uh, uh, benign matrix in there. And this is the best picture. This is the work of my students, one of my uh, current students, recent results. So we actually did uh, cancer therapy, photothermal therapy, we, even without using chemotherapy drugs whatsoever. So basically, this is how uh, a healthy cell would look like. This is, it could be a single cell like that, or two cells, or three cells uh, agglomerated with each other, but they would be nice rounded colors, uh, rounded shapes like those, right? If you zap it with uh, visible or near infrared light, you can see the, the outcome here. Basically, you completely obliterate the cell. So it's no longer round shaped, it is completely obliterated, and then you can actually quantify it as you increase the, la the uh, uh, Actually, we're not even using laser. We're using cheap lamps, near-infrared lamps, because the, our materials have the unique ability of absorbing the entire water window instead of just one narrow band that is typically used in monochromatic sources like laser, ser surgical laser. So you can use a cheaper lamp, and with relatively small power, you can reduce the amount of, uh, of cancer cells. But this is early stage research. There is a lot of control that we must do, including controls on healthy cells, because all of these studies are only done on, on cancer cells. <laughs> so at least it's a very encouraging uh, first step for us to write uh, uh, NIH and secret proposal that we're going to pursue with our biological and biomedical uh, collaborators at UNT, at the UNT Health Science Center, et cetera. <clears throat> so you know, the take home message of my entire talk, I hope I showed you I gave you some flavor that we can design a lot of technologies, whether they're related to energy and environment or biomedical applications by using smart science to drive them. So we did not necessarily set forth when I started my journey at UNT 17 years ago, trying to make all of these discoveries. The first application I identified is the one that I focused upon the most, the solid state lighting. But as the journey unfolded, the beautiful structure that our crystallographer, Dr. Vlad Nesterov, for example, obtained, or my students <clears throat> predicted even from computational modeling in collaboration with my colleague, Tom Kandari, uh, Andres Cisneros, et cetera, okay? Uh, Jin Ching Du in, in material science, likewise, the solid state modeling, identified these other applications, and then we predicted the properties and then tar targeted them systematically. So, Science is, is a great thing. So the only thing is that we have to be patient, we have to be persistent, we have to be stubborn even to resisting the temptation of expecting results tomorrow. We're all talking about long term here, but any step is encouraging, if not to our generation, to our children or grandchildren's generation. God and nature be willing. So thank you all. I would like to end with um, acknowledging everybody the army of people, I was fortunate to supervise nearly 200 group members over the years, including 20 graduate students. These are the current graduate students that I have. <clears throat> I managed to fool 20 students, but one trick that I do is I co-supervise. So you see a lot of stars here and there. And those stars are actually superstar collaborators at UNT, uh, our surrounding institutions like TWU, UT Dallas. Uh, <clears throat> Baylor University, etc., even distant universities <coughs> uh, like Texas A&M, some private sector like Intelligent Optical System, uh, Phosphor Tech, <clears throat> and even I tell my students is that the whole world is my lab. It's not my lab space in the chemistry building only. The shared space that I have in the UNT clean room, 
the confocal microscopy, beautiful facilities in biology building, the beautiful optics facilities in physics, so much more, including our intrusion to our collaborators else, elsewhere, not only in the United States, even ab abroad. So I will end with this quote. Some famous politician has wrote, written a book, say, said, it, it takes a village. I would like to expand it to it actually takes a globe. Not only a village, not only in the same village of UNT that we have, the entire state, the entire country, and indeed the entire world, because that's how we intrude to solve real life problems a lot faster if we collaborate between chemists, physicists, engineers, industrial sector, national labs, whoever has the cap capability, we have the means, once they see our promising data, they'll be enticed and fooled to collaborate with us and work with us. Uh, <clears throat> so finally, you know, a lot of the work must need, must need scientific funding from the government, the private sector. I'm mostly acknowledging actually the National Science Foundation and the Robert Welch, A. Welch Foundation. The Welch Foundation actually funds just basic research. So, we have been working for 11 years on organic, on, on um, porous materials, these super hydrophobic materials that have these beautiful environmental applications for fracking, oil spill, etc. I received my first federal dollar. I haven't received it yet. I will receive it this coming summer, okay, for 11 years. But funding from the World Foundation for the basic bonding between the metals with themselves or the metals with these organic ligands. The National Science Foundation, just the basic photophysics, the light emission properties, is what allows that. But I am not all, all entirely complaining because we were funded generously by people who fund applied research like DOE, NASA, and this is the new uh, funding source that I told you about, IARPA, an intelligence agency, a <coughs> uh, subcontract that we're receiving from LIDAS, a uh, defense contractor company probably, um, more, more than intelligence, their, their common niches. And again, the world, we have also common projects uh, supported in Jordan, in Qatar, and other countries, Italy uh, as well. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you all for your patience for listening to this long talk. Appreciate it.